Hello and welcome back to another installment of Warhammer 40k Team Builds. My name is Saiken and today I'm guiding through another team composition. I call this the Support Fire Composition, which really utilizes a couple of classes in order to maximize the value of Support Fire and offers kind of a ranged uh, combat composition. Now when you deal with ranged combat, you want to make sure that you do have some shape or form of dealing with cover uh, and this combination or team comp is going to do that by using grenades there are other ways such as uh, clever positioning which this comp uh, can also do i try to do something that uh, is just recycling the same classes with the librarian uh, to teleport someone up over and over again so I switched uh, to a bit of an unorthodox style. In terms of healing and defensive capabilities, we're relying on the heal stratagem as well as the tide of shadow stratagem. Everything else is really just bonus at uh, this point. Uh, the strength of spirit with the extra crit is fine. Uh, you could, uh, and I would even recommend that, uh, uh, switch the willpower out for gate of infinity just so that you have a little bit more mobility isn't really uh, required but it helps so that that's it for the stratagems let's talk about who has which role in this composition the core of the composition is the double interceptor play i purposefully had two different builds that i wanted to showcase one that is really more focused on a two-handed weapon and one that is kind of a hybrid between using a really strong uh, storm bolter and then a melee uh, weapon both of them are skilled into the support fire uh, branch which allows them to deal five points of damage twice around um, uh, whenever someone else is hitting a target we're uh, synergizing that with the purchaser the purchaser could either use psi cannons or in this case i really leaned into that high ranged uh, concept where they are using a lot of psi uh, lancers in order to get the job done and the justice car is there in order to tank shift over ap and really just do everything else if you don't feel comfortable with the healing uh, use by all means a healing skull on the justice car so let's shortly look into uh, what i brought with me i really keep it uh, nice and simple the justice car in this particular build really just honor the chapter as often and a little bit of ranged uh, stuff and that's it then uh, he is already good to go in terms of armor we're rocking one with an extra uh, passive slot and uh, we want to increase the willpower which is why we do have uh, the sacred incense and then you can either uh, use a armor with even more willpower but this uh, team comp doesn't really rely too much on him uh, using uh, his willpower to get it going everybody is de constantly dealing damage with the support fire so what i did is i extended his magazine so that he uh, doesn't need to reload as often he's going to be the supporter here so he has the auto loader skull because the team comp is very hungry for ammunition as a melee weapon I went with one of the true and trites, Pale, uh, which is one of the melee weapons that allows you to attack in an area. So just kind of softening up the targets and at the same time, whenever someone comes closer once a turn, striking them back. You can use whatever you want. Uh, melee is not the focus. As a Storm Bolter, however, we do have a nice uh, little specific Storm Bolter, Traitor's Dew, with the highest range. So we're rocking 17 range. That's almost twice as much as a normal Storm Bolter. And uh, it does have a very nice 8 points of damage crit. Uh, 9 actually with a uh, with a Psy Bolt in there. So really strong weapon, which allows him to have the flexibility with the rest uh, of what he's doing. He's not the main damage dealer hence you could rebuild it or uh, just let him crit more often so this here is a perfectly viable uh, build uh, as well where you're going for the crit and better fact i can just showcase it uh, we'll just let him crit more often all right let's go to the interceptor interceptor number one uh, does have a build where we are having uh, the uh, psi lancer in there other than that the only thing that is important is the support fire arc here and whenever possible that extra war gear slot so that's really it zero melee just full um, support and the war gear slot for that you can have that built times two 
I just had <clears throat> another um, interceptor laying around and before reskilling him I felt like it will mesh well enough in uh, this build. In terms of uh, ranged weapon we're this time going with a Psylancer. Victory's Testament is a good one simply due to the range that we do have. On top of it it has a nice uh, crit and on top of it the damage is just overall good. You could go for others um, and they are uh, perfectly serviceable as well. One that I uh, like a lot is Demon Stinger. Um, has a little bit less range but allows you to deal really really high amounts of damage against demons. As a matter of fact, you know what, uh, no, don't just talk about it, uh, showcase it. Uh, with uh, that we are set against bigger targets. Uh, the second interceptor has a build uh, that focuses on uh, the support fire and instead of doing all of the other stuff I figured might as well uh, use the melee weapon category here which will give us a bit more flexibility. He's going to be the tank that is going to go in hence I've given him the stoic blade twice around auto parry super strong against uh, enemy melee characters and as the storm bolter which is going to be his main shtick we are using something with a lot of ammo because really he's not uh, using that storm bolter too often in order to deal damage directly it's more the support fire what's important about support fire is for interceptors it is fixed so this here doesn't matter unless you intend to use uh, the weapon uh, outside of support fire. Therefore, um, this build here uh, will still deal 5 points of damage just as uh, much as this build with their support fire and that's what we're trying to do as much as possible. Finally, got a purchaser in there, uh, got ourselves an armor. So first uh, the skills, uh, what, what's the important one is we want support fire up here. Um, you could get extra um, ammunition if needed. I went into extra grenades and astral aim. Astral aim just to soften up these ultra hard targets and um, and uh, be. It's a very nice support just to shoot off body parts. Um, this here will uh, allow us to trigger um, uh, trigger autos twice. Uh, meaning mental focus for crit on range triggers twice as well and the support fire triggers twice instead of once however support fire here isn't that great because it really only deals two points of damage but it is extra damage nonetheless now that means we will need to reload titan's vengeance quite often um, the ranged weapon here could be anything uh, that has a lot of ammunition um, uh, if you're doing the support uh, the support fire so there are a couple of options titan's vengeance is what i've chosen because it has a really nice uh, base damage and some extra crit and some extra crit damage and since we are going to crit uh, with our astral aim for sure once uh, per round it is nice uh, to have that option other than that you could of course build the character around passive gear but that leaves you wide open with a question of how do you deal with cover and the way that i'm dealing with cover is grenades and therefore our loadout includes a nice little armor our armor uh, gives us the option to uh, not only have more grenades but also a bigger range there is a version 3 of uh, the armor available keeper of the flame but another character currently has that so I don't want to mess that up uh, same deal though uh, just simply uh, eight grenades which is more than enough always removing cover cool uh, last but not least um, the idea of uh, that build is to go in uh, potentially into sort of medium uh, range and then uh, start just picking down the enemies this character does have the option to regain AP by himself. This character with melee strikes can uh, can do that. Um, and this character can shift uh, AP and also reload other characters. Um, and really the extra kind of quote unquote non-seen or hidden uh, shots is three shots um, right here. Uh, three shots right here and two shots right uh, there which overall is eight additional support fire shots that will make this build quite viable it is one that you can do even earlier in the game it's not very gear dependent but let's see how well it plays all right so we're joining the battle right away we got ambushed by a set of um, 
uh, plague marines and that's a great example of how to just deal with those situations for starters uh, we don't have a disruptor uh, skull, but uh, typically the frag grenades or the grenades are doing exactly that. So uh, we will just open up uh, this uh, the setup. And as you can see, it's a perfect removal of cover, so not much needed afterwards. We could now spend a lot of extra turns or even kind of uh, marking skulls in order to to, um, to mark them uh, so that they take more damage but that's really not needed uh, what we're going to do sell. instead is we're doing a free teleport over here there you go and we're going to let uh, the bills shine so as you can see uh, a crit would automatically kill uh, this guy and if we're not killing him with the crit the support fire will kill him. So that was one kill. That's a uh, support fire, a nice little support fire and that's another nice little support fire. We are... Uh, mm, I mean, we haven't even popped the stratagem to be fair. Uh, let's continue with more support fire. go good although uh, our um, purchaser is currently out of action points it doesn't mean that they cannot support fire anymore quite the uh, opposite so as you can see we can shoot and I'll take the support fire from them very nice good let's start to Clean this up. Foul seed claim. Ah, we are the hammer. One, two. I am here to um, Might as well hit this guy and kill him with a support fire. All right. Apparently, support fire is out because we are out of ammunition. But oh, that's okay. You have been judged. My blade is yours. Good, the little bit of remaining opposition easily falters on the, our quite heavy uh, attack. So uh, that wasn't even using any of the special abilities nor any of our extra crit. But let's look at the different engagement and see if this was just a fluke or if this is the normal way to go. All right, we triggered a, another pack of uh, Plague Nurgle's minions. One important aspect when you're playing this kind of build is you um, cannot do kind of that one turn clear with a build because support fire will not reset when you are going into a new engagement. Hence, make sure that you're always very much aware uh, of your surroundings. Uh, these surroundings here uh, require a little bit more aggression and thanks to our bigger uh, grenade uh, explosion radius uh, we can already start hurting them badly. As you can see we do have knockback as well as a lot of uh, damage on the grenades. I could simply uh, shoot another grenade but we're not going to do that this time. Instead, what we're going to do is the same as we've done before. We're going to use our uh, our knight to go in. We got enough um, ability point, uh, uh, enough willpower to actually. Eh, not yet. I do have an idea. I am here to so, and let me showcase a couple of other things. Uh, for starters, uh, we want yeah. uh, we want uh, to get into position with our uh, support fire. So, let's work against the demon engines. That was just one support fire. Uh, a little bit poor positioning here. Let's try that again. There we 
go much better. There we go. Now the support fire triggers. And we are doing this, plus this, plus this. And just ended the turn. We're going to have reinforcements up there. So let's take care of them. And it's a good test for the longevity of uh, the build. To showcase that it's not just like that one rounder and uh, that is it. There is a little bit more in here. So we haven't reloaded, uh, which brings us to the situation that we're uh, four out of seven, four out of six and three out of four. So there is still plenty of, uh, of power left. Good. Let's get into position. Before we're doing anything, uh, we're softening them up. Good. And now it's time for exactly that support fire. Moving into a, de a decent position. Yes, Commander. Fabulous. Good. Great option now uh, to showcase how well the build does when you're stacking uh, crit. So look at that. Running a 100% crit, 21 hit points, uh, 29 hit points down to 15, down to 10, down to 8. So that's 20 point, uh, hit points of damage just in one go. Unleash me. Same goes for the mini strikes. See them fall, brothers. Praise the emperor. And we don't even uh, need to transfer action points. So you can see that we're dishing out so much damage that we don't even need the action points. Uh, the build is, uh, is uh, the the will point. Uh, to use another chapter in order to shift action points is what I meant to say. You can see that the uh, build really nicely comes together. Uh, you can do it much earlier and with enough ammunition you can stand in a very very long uh, lasting battle as you can always think about those eight extra shots that you do have available. That's 15 damage per interceptor so that's 30 damage and four uh, points of damage uh, from the purchase so we're looking at 34 free damage every single round on top of it of course your weapon damage and so on and so forth that's really it uh, let me know if you enjoyed uh, the range support fire combination and would you consider running it take care until the next time and goodbye all right so we engaged the first pack of enemies and teleported right into the middle of them which uh, cost us four uh, spell points thanks to um, recovering one so here's the thing this is a great setup because a lot of hit points that we're dealing with right so we got one two three four five uh, chaos space marines including pretty heavy uh, chaos uh, space marines and we got non-stunnable uh, targets on top of that which uh, means I should have uh, activated the litany of uh, hate beforehand that uh, was a small mistake so could have done that better instead what we are going to do is we're uh, starting with a few uh, stuns and 
one easy way of uh, doing that is using our uh, grenades here or uh, since we do have it available let's just use the will of the emperor and we have preloaded the uh, weapon of our paladin with a stun so what you're going to see is if we're moving up and if we're force striking them the first few of them will already uh, uh, take uh, so much damage that they are indeed stunned we're going to take a small retaliation but given the extent of our armor that's really not a big problem there you go now we do have the first stunned enemy and here is where the whole uh, thing begins to uh, completely become crazy so we're moving up uh, with our uh, chaplain we're executing and look at that chaplain I uh, was at zero got four uh, AP out of that everybody else got another AP out of it and we're not even done yet right so uh, if we're striking and force striking that'll deal damage to the tree and also nicely stun them so next up we want of course will power back on our uh, on our librarian which lets him move up Nicely execute that guy. Not only a great animation, but also librarian up to seven um, a, um, AP. We're going to uh, continue hitting enemies. Let's go for another execute. And we're up to five, six, eight, and uh, six. All right, that's not enough yet. Uh, Saiken says we want to do more and we shall do more Kill one of the eggs unfortunately also explode ourselves. That wasn't that clever. I still want to um, I still want to get this guy down. So we're going to use our psychic shriek to steal any damage Just basically disrupts them and we spend two spell points for that. Moving up, wanting to get kind of a spell point back. More execution. And we're up to seven. Uh, five, seven, seven, seven. Fabulous. All right, how about we're uh, testing this here kill and a nice little stun as an AOE we're going to give an AP to our apothecary and let's take stock uh, just for a second uh, we are done with all the surrounding um, enemies we still have a heavily, heavily injured uh, tree left over. And we're at 5, 8, 8, and 8 uh, when it comes uh, to our um, action points. Enough time to heal up. Don't forget uh, the free willpower in terms of uh, seeds that you're getting. And really, we can kill this one with whoever we uh, feel like potentially the best bet would be uh, to use our uh, librarian just so that we are getting our um, our points back now we know that there are reinforcements coming in so uh, how about we're going right down here and are welcoming them in an appropriate fashion given that we have so many uh, action points left over can easily move in and welcome them the old-fashioned way with a little bit of an overwatch play 
So the strength of uh, the stun build is obvious. Uh, you are drowning in AP and there is always something that you can uh, stun. I'm trying to uh, showcase a version of uh, this uh, build where you're not relying that much on the Empyrean uh, brain mines uh, just to get uh, more stun going. Uh, the iron arm biomancy in itself with the AOP attack is typically enough to just make sure that every uh, everything is uh, stunned uh, together with uh, the shriek from the librarian uh, you're typically good to go and if you do have the willpower um, uh, the willpower refill uh, stratagem that i'm using then you're basically good to go so enemies are coming in first one automatically dies and the only reason why these guys aren't immediately dead is because um, they have, uh, unfortunately, run out of ammunition. Alright, so how do we deal uh, with uh, such a setup? You can see uh, these guys are stunnable, so perfect option here would be to warp charge overload. Disrupted. We want to get uh, spell points back, so that was five spell points. We get one back from um, from high uh, from focus, and we're immediately executing. You can see that means the guy who has stunned them and ran all the way there is back, not only to three, but is back to four um, uh, to four action points. Where. I'm going to move up. I'm just hitting this guy. No, we don't want to kill you. We're, we've just we just wanted to move, right? There you go. Yet another stun on the other side, and we already talked about we want the librarian to kind of gobble it up. The good part about this team comp is also you are free to uh, shift uh, the will points to whoever you want uh, or the kills and therefore also the experience. I as well just give uh, some uh, some to our paladin so that he keeps a nice and uh, tidy will point uh, reservoir. So that's it. That is basically all you need to know about uh, the stun crew. I think it is a, a phenomenal display of how well this team is uh, is working. You have seen if you are stacking enough damage on top of it, you can easily go through uh, like two packs at uh, at one time. And we had eight, 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 and five, so that's like what nearly 30 AP left over when we were done here. So imagine there were just additional packs. We could have just gone on and on and on very very strong overall uh, build i can highly recommend it and i uh, hope you give it a try uh, it is one of my favorite team compositions although it is borderline op so be careful uh, to not optimize the fun out of the game for you take care have a good one and see you in the next team building guide